So Bill Maher um, has a new concern that he voiced on his show on HBO. Uh, he's talking about a potential Trump 2024 run. Take a look at this. Oh, I'm concerned only about the future. I'm concerned about the past only as it affects the future. Sure. So it's great we're talking about subpoenas for what happened. What I care about is January 6, 2025. And as you know, because you wrote me a nice email after I did a, a piece a few weeks ago about what I thought was going to happen, the slow-moving coup, which I've been talking about since before Trump was even elected. And if I could just review, basically, I said that, you know, he thought last time that all the Republicans would fall in line with what he wanted and do his bidding, and they didn't. Some had integrity. And what he's been doing since is replacing those people. There's a purge going on behind the scenes. So next time, when he calls them up and says, I hope you can find me a few votes, they're going to say how many. He's going to have his stooges in place. That was what you wrote me about. A lot of people did. I think it's going to happen. I think you guys, the Democrats, are going to lose big in 2022, which is going to make it worse. There are going to be more state legislatures that can do that kind of monkeying behind the scenes to put the people in place who will do Trump's bidding. I think Trump is going to declare for office. I think he's going to get the nomination. I think the rallies are going to start. People are going to be, it's going to get very violent out there. My question is, what are we doing about the next time? The election happens, say Trump loses. Doesn't matter whether he, if he loses, he's going to say he won. We know that. There's no doubt he's going to say I won. And this time, He's not going to go away so easily come January 20th, 2025. What are we doing about that when he is insisting that he is the president, whether he won or not, and there are people who are helping him with it? Well, I'm in complete agreement with, uh, <clears throat> with the, the alarm that you express and you feel about this, because I think what Donald Trump took away from the failed insurrection is that uh, if he couldn't find uh, you know, 11,000 votes in Georgia, couldn't find a, a corrupt elections official to give him those votes, he's determined that next time he'll have someone in that position who will. Uh, and basically, it's a two-pronged strategy. They're trying to disenfranchise people of color around the country so that they can win. And if they lose, they want to be positioned to overturn the result. Um, where I would disagree with um, your, your forecast, I hope and pray, is we cannot lose the House. We must hold the House. If Kevin McCarthy had been Speaker in 2020, if we'd lost a few more seats in the 2020 election in the House, he would have overturned the result in the House. He will do whatever Donald Trump tells him to do. Someone like that can never be allowed to go near the Speaker's office. So first of all, Adam Schiff there at the end, what's he doing? Fear. He wants to run on fear. You cannot let, they're so bad, they're so evil, they're so wrong, they're so terrible. You cannot let them win. We have to hold the house. Okay. That's on you, son. That's on you and your Democratic colleagues to hold the house, to, to do popular stuff, to make people want to go vote for you. Instead, it's just fear. Be afraid. Be afraid. I want to scare you into just shutting your mind off and voting for me. By the way, they could be just as bad as he says they are, but it's still on you. It's on you. All right, put Schiff aside. By the way, he's part of the problem because he, of course, was the biggest Russiagator and Russiagate was unmasked as a total and utter fraud. And it, it sucked all the air out of the room during the Trump administration. For years, they were acting like Trump was a puppet of Vladimir Putin. Total nonsense. People like Schiff were super hawkish on Russia as a result of it. So not, not uh, resisting Trump in any intelligent way policy-focused, meaningful, left-wing way. Hey, here's why this guy's a problem. He's continuing our wars. He's bombing all these countries. He's still outsourcing the jobs. You know, he's keeping wages low. Instead of doing that, it was just, oh my God, Vladimir Putin controls our country. It was nonsense. It was Cold War 2.0 propaganda led by idiots like this. So he's part of the fucking problem is why Democrats are not popular. But put him aside for a second to Bill Maher's point. He says he's scared of January 6, 2025 because Trump is going to try to steal it again. Bill, He's not going to have to steal it. Wake the fuck up. Have you seen any of the polls on the gene generic ballot for 2022? Republicans are up 10 points in the Democrats need to win by five points just to hold steady, just to keep the numbers as they are right now. 
Are you insane? The Tea Party wave, Republicans won by three points. Democrats are down 10 right now. We're looking at a historic wave. A poll just came out on Iowa. Um, Trump beat Biden in Iowa. Now Trump has an even bigger lead on Biden in Iowa. There was a national poll. Trump versus Biden in Iowa. Trump is winning by even more. Uh, Biden's approval rating is down to 38%. When Biden's approval rating was over 50%, he barely eked out a victory against Donald Trump. Trump would drax them sclounced right now. He would destroy Joe Biden right now. Talk about getting ahead of yourself. What are we going to do if slash when he, seal, he steals again? First of all, the guy's what, 75 years old? And he's a bloated beluga whale? He's not a healthy dude. We don't even know if he's going to make it that far. Okay, but let's assume that he does for a second. Okay, he makes it that far. He runs. Right now, he is an overwhelming favorite. And you say, okay, well, what if Biden doesn't make it that far? By the way, fair point. <laughs> if Biden doesn't make it that far. Then he got what? Kamala or Pete? Trump would wipe the floor with Kamala and Pete. So he's worried about Trump stealing it. You should be worried about Trump legitimately winning because Joe Biden and the Democrats aren't delivering. How many popular ideas were in that Build Back Better package? And then they stripped them. They stripped them. So we had elder care. We had um, lowering drug prices. By the way, there's a compromise on that now. They're, they're going to lower 10 drug prices. There are thousands of drugs, only 10. The Democrats are coming to the rescue, we promise. Um, the tuition-free community college, universal pre-K, child tax credit. The list goes on and on. All these popular policies. Then one by one by one by one, they fell like dominoes. It was torturous. Every day a new story would come out. Well, that one's gone, and now that one's gone, and now that one's gone. And now the Democratic bill is they send you in the mail 37 cents and a Pop-Tart and say, shut the fuck up and vote for me because Republicans suck. Why are, you why are you focusing on this? What you should be doing is yelling at Joe Biden to eliminate all student loan debt through executive order, which he can do. What you should be doing is prodding Joe Biden to legalize marijuana through executive order, change it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 5, which he, he can do. What you should be doing is telling him to hold a standalone vote on a $15 minimum wage through reconciliation, which he can do. Cut another stimulus check. These are things you could tell him to do. You, you know, you can be arguing for popular policies, which would in turn raise the Democrats' favorability, which might actually help in elections. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. Instead, it's immediately to they act like the, the Democrats have no power to control anything at all whatsoever. Nothing. It's like, oh, well, what if Trump does this? And what if the Republicans do this? And what if we lose the House? And what if he steals it again? And what if... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Man up and do some shit. Help people. Do your job. Bill Maher now, all, it's just nothing but fear. Fear, fear, fear. <sighs> Trump should be the easiest person in the world to beat at this point. Because he was unmasked. He ran as a populist, and he was a fake populist. He didn't do shit to help the working class. His biggest legislative accomplishment was a tax cut for the rich, where 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%. That tax bill they signed in 2017 incentivized outsourcing of U.S. jobs. You can't beat this dude. You can't beat a dude who's caught on tape talking about grabbing pussies and not even waiting. You can't beat this dude. You can't beat him. You're afraid of him. After he's already been defeated and been gone for four years, you're like, oh my God, what happens if he steals it again? <sighs> Fact I'm bringing up every show these days, and I'll keep bringing it up. In 1938, after FDR had been president for a while, Democrats held 80% of the House and 80% of the Senate. And FDR got elected four times. Why? Because they fucking delivered for people. They did things. Then you don't have to worry about this monster or that monster or Ted Cruz talking about Big Bird or Mike Pence trying to implement theocracy or Donald Trump becoming a tyrant and a dictator and stealing the election. You don't have to worry about any of that. You don't have to worry about any of it if you just deliver for people. And instead of prodding Democrats, he has on one of the worst Democrats in the House to say, to just sell fear. Oh my God, be afraid. Oh my God, what if he does this again? You're thinking like 12 moves in the future without stating the obvious as to what can get you to avoid those ends. And it drives me crazy.